Hey guys and welcome back to another GCSE revision video. Now carrying on our revision series and this is now when it comes to the power and conflict poetry. Lots of you guys said you would really love some revision techniques, especially what would be the best way to approach the power and conflict question. So myself and Mr. Sales want to present to you the one poem that you are guaranteed to find a comparison point for all 15 poems in this anthology. In other words, we want to put forward the somewhat controversial idea that you can use checking out my history to compare it to any question, meaning when you're going to your poetry exam, you already think, doesn't matter which question is gonna come up, I know that I can use checking out my history to compare to whichever poem. And of course, if checking out my history is your main poem, happy days, because you can then compare it to any other poem that you really like talking about, okay? So Mr. Sales, why is checking out my history really interesting when you're considering one of the main overarching ideas and themes, which is the power of nature? How can that be tied to the nature poems? Brilliant. So important to understand the examiners don't expect you to write equally about both poems so there isn't that much about nature in checking out my history but you will find references that will fit a poem that is about nature the obvious one that is about nature is the prelude by the way i should say i don't think this is the question that will come up but if we deal with the hardest one first you'll be full of confidence that this could go anywhere so in checking out his my history, we've got this really interesting idea of these war figures like Shaka the Great Zulu and Tuisant L'Overture, who are warriors. But as we move towards the end of the poem, we now have female figures who have not been defeated in battle. So we have Nanny de Maroon, who sets up an independent settlement on Jamaica and is never defeated. That settlement still survives. And then we have Mary Seacole, who goes to the Crimean War, and she kind of stops conflict, or she heals people who are the victims of conflict. So these are healing figures, and so the women become symbols of nature that are going to heal. Remember, the poem starts with him having a blinded eye, but ends with him having full vision because he's getting his full history. And so symbolically, this is that kind of female perspective. And the way that the female perspective is shown as being really beneficial is how it's allied to nature and it's elemental. So Nanny de Maroon is compared to fire. Fire, of course, is life-giving. And then we have Mary Seacole, who is like the yellow sun, bringing the warmth to the snows of Russia and Europe, kind of curing through the power of nature. Uh, then we're going to contrast that to our nature poem. And I'm going to pick the prelude. In that, the narrator has committed some sort of sin. I won't go into all the symbolism of that poem, but he's obviously really worried about what he's done, taking this boat, because we've got this image of the mountain pursuing him and these phantom figures infecting his memory at the end. So he is the opposite of the narrator in Checking Out My History. In Checking Out My History, the power of nature has liberated him to find his own identity, whereas in the prelude, he is pursued by nature and made to feel oppressed and guilty by it. Okay, that's brilliant. Now, the other overarching theme that's explored within the Power and Conflict anthology is to do with the power of an individual. Now, of course, when it comes to checking out my history and you're maybe asked to talk about power, how is power illustrated? Make sure you mention the power of an individual. The speaker, the narrator, feels disempowered by his teachers who only teach him European history and if there's any non-European history taught to him, it's taught in a very biased way, in a way that disempowers and also discredits the achievements of black figures as well as other minority figures, okay? So checking out my history obviously illustrates and criticizes the power of teachers in, as Mr. Sales has mentioned, bandaging his eye up to his own history. And of course, he then takes active steps to empower himself in learning his own history. What could you compare it to when it comes to power? Has power shown, and of course, as I mentioned, how's the power of an individual illustrated? The best and perfect comparative uh, poem is 
my last touches okay so of course in checking out my history you've got the narrator the speaker who is disempowered whilst the duke in my last duchess exercises and imposes his power over his duchess who he kills okay so of course when it comes to the power of an individual there's lots of other poems you can consider but the best comparison so say for instance you had my last duchess coming up again because it came up in 2023 that uh, the, the perfect comparison could be when you're considering the power of an individual in checking out my history. But of course, also consider, for instance, Ozymandias, right? Ozymandias is illustrating the power of this individual whilst he was still alive, King Ramesses II, right? However, also, obviously, nature disempowers him once he has died. But you can squarely focus on how he abused his power. He had the snare of cold command. Once more, you're juxtaposing and contrasting that to the powerlessness of the narrator in checking out my history. Yeah, I'm just going to jump in there as well because we haven't yet talked about the structure and form. And uh, in both those poems, um, you've got iambic pentameter, really tightly controlled structure which reflects the personality of Ozymandias and the Duke whereas the structure in uh, Checking Out My History it, you've got two types so you've got the uh, really simple nursery rhyme scheme that he attaches to the European history and then when we look at uh, the black experience it's completely different the rhythms are much more natural they're much freer and you can talk about that as a way of regaining the control of the individual. Um, what's interesting for me is in Ozymandias, the individual thinks they've got power at the end, mm. but they're destroyed. How do you see the power of the Duke at the end? Is he going to be destroyed or is he going to keep his power? I believe he keeps his power. In fact, he has yeah. the Count's, uh, I guess, uh, messenger emissary coming yes. in to uh, broker his next marriage even if he literally implicates himself to this individual and says I killed my previous wife now let's talk about my new wife so he maintains yes. his power right and of course I believe this poem was written as Robert Browning's subtle way of criticizing the excessive power that men had during this era I agree that's fantastic okay um, Right, the power of history. Well, it's easy to see how this is about the power of history. Uh, so it starts off with this idea of the teacher teaching a Eurocentric history and actually keeping out of history all these events that you probably haven't been taught in school. I certainly wasn't taught them in school. And so we just don't have this image of successful black figures in taught in European schools and so he's had to go out and educate himself which makes us ask who is the poem written for is it written for white people in England who just don't appreciate this or they have his black history month where they tend to just look at slavery which is another way of saying oh you needed the white person to change whereas he's got a completely different view look at all these successful figures from the past but it's not just that, it's that they've been excluded from that history and he only gets that identity back when he understands that history. So I think his audience is also um, black people from different cultures who've settled here mm. and he's saying, look, you don't have to accept this view that we've been given by the British Empire or the British education system. There is so much more that you can learn. Um, so he's kind of a rallying call um, to other people from similar backgrounds to him to appreciate who they are and what their history has been. Um, who am I going to compare that to? Well, I've forgotten actually. <laughs> Which Ozymandias? Poem? Yes, Ozymandias. Okay, so the obvious comparison with Ozymandias, thank you very much, <laughs> is that he believes he can control history, that he's a kind of master of the universe. Look on my works, ye mighty and despair. But the irony of the poem is that he does not survive, and that's symbolised by his statue uh, falling into disrepair, being buried by the sand. The only part that really does survive is his face, but Shelley celebrates not the figure of Ozymandias, he celebrates the artist who carved the face. And so this is another way of making sure that you last in history is through art. So Shelley is obviously hoping that his poem will do that for him. And ironically, it has because we're still studying it. Uh, and also the artist who created this picture 
of Ozymandias in himself and showed the cynicism and the sneer that he had, his history is much more powerful than the dictator, the tyrant, who thought he was all-powerful, but has now been written out of history. Yeah, and I think also in terms of um, time, the power of time and history, other two poems to consider would be Kamikaze and Tissue, okay? So I'm going to start with Kamikaze and I'll go to the least popular poem in this collection, which is Tissue. Nice. Kamikaze illustrates the passage of time, which diminishes the Kamikaze pilot who had decided not to engage in this suicide mission in order to live out his final days with his family, right? Nature is what inspired him to make this decision. But time decreased his power. He became more of an ostracized figure, right? So again, going back to the point that you'd made, right? In checking out my history, the power of these historical black figures has kind of, um, there's this resurgence through this narrator who goes um, on this journey to learn his history. However, the kamikaze pilot is vanquished, right? He has been defeated by the end. So that would be a really nice comparison. And of course, Tissue. So Tissue is a poem that I do know a lot of students across the country, the first thing don't get what the message is about. And to be honest, the message is quite tenuous, right? It's this idea of just, it's just this general notion of the power of paper and teaching us history, but also just the power of paper to, through time. But another message as well within Tissue is this notion that we as human beings think that our achievements, what we build, will outlast us. If anything, they will last forever. However, we can see how time disintegrates these achievements by the end of the poem Tissue, right? So again, there's this disempowering aspect and this disempowering message that human achievement over time with the passage of time and the passage of history is ultimately destroyed, okay? That's why that would also be a really good comparative poem to consider with checking out my history if you've got a power of time or power of history question. Brilliant. Take us through identity. Yes. Okay, so checking out my history is definitely an identity poem. And in fact, if you've got an identity related question, you should like be able to go to town for this question. Okay, so identity is one of the other themes. And of course, you could either compare checking out my history, which obviously explores the speaker's identity as a black man, right? So obviously, um, the author himself is Caribbean, but of course, this, this can uh, 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 tie to black African history too, because he mentions the South African figure, Shaka Zulu. So of course, we can see his identity being explored and the fact that his, he experienced an identity crisis initially because the education system has not taught him the more positive aspects of his history. You can nicely juxtapose that very easily with Emigre, right? So Emigre is an identity poem. It's about this speaker who has had to leave her home country, but she develops a sense of nostalgia, the sense of yearning, and she still yearns and still believes her home country as still this beautiful woman that can be rescued, right? But in all honesty, when it comes to the identity, you can tie it to also Kamikaze, literally any of the identity poems, and these are the poems towards the end of the collection. Yeah, what's interesting for me is those poems you've mentioned, the people in them tend to lose their identity mm. in comparison to Agar's poem, where the protagonist gains their identity. And so being able to show that difference is an easy, sophisticated point to get the examiners on side. Okay, and then the final uh, overall yes. theme? War and conflict. So that's the one that keeps coming up all the time. Uh, there are any number of war poems that you can use to compare this to. Uh, we've Let's start with checking out my history. We've got these warlike figures, and I've already told you the journey of this poem that looks at these male figures uh, like Shaka Zulu and uh, Toussaint Louverture who were incredibly victorious and did amazing things but also were ultimately defeated by the power of colonial armies but then there's that shift towards uh, these female figures who have used war in a different way in order to gain independence and to gain reputation and healing. And so there's this image of war being worth it in the end because it has led to this identity, this freedom at the end of the poem. If we pick another war poem, like War Photographer, the ending is much more ambiguous. The war photographer takes these photos and hopes that the horror of these images is going to change the future, but the ending suggests that maybe it doesn't. People just drink their beers and go and have a bath 
and then forget about it. And the same is true in something like bayonet charge. The young man that we find who's awake and running suddenly in battle is getting rid of any thoughts of patriotism or king or country and just desperate to survive. They are um, not likely to end happily in this image, in contrast to our narrator in checking out the history. Are there any other war poems that you would jump to? No, I think you've covered all bases and I think it's great when you're considering how, you know, these other war figures in a checking out history like Toussaint Louverture, who obviously engaged in the Haitian Revolution. You've got the other war figures, for example, Shaka Zulu. You can draw some really nice contrasts with the poems that Mr. Sallies has mentioned. Yeah. So our plan was to prove to you that this one poem can fit any single question that comes up. And uh, I think we've done it. What do you reckon? Yes, I do. I do. And hopefully, as you're now walking into your poetry exam, you can rest assured that you have the one poem that you can use for any question that comes up. Brilliant. <laughs>